Okay. Uh, rolling. Uh, I wanted to just kind of mention, James, are we on? We're rolling. Okay, we're rolling here in uh, one of the homes of the Occupy Venice organizers. Oops. And we're Go speaking ahead. with AJ, who's... AC. AC, I'm sorry, okay. AC. Um, who's going to be speaking with us, and we're kind of creating mutual content right now. And uh, we welcome the viewers who've been following us on the Weebly site as we march across America. And uh, it was a pretty heavy day. I really opened myself up to the city. It's part of my holiday thing. But we've had a great time out here in Venice. Yeah, Occupy Venice has been really exemplary in providing examples of grassroots organization. We were just looking at some of AC's videos about uh, the, the caravan, right? Is that what you call it? Yeah, they, they, they came up with the name uh, Occupy Venice Relief Caravan. Relief Caravan. Yeah. And that was really nice watching that. So I see we spent a, a few hours together, a day together. We met at the Occupy Venice here in this very home. And uh, I want to express gratitude to Clark and Susan for hooking us up last night. And uh, I don't know, we just wanted to try to keep on moving down. We got to get to San Diego. You know, we've got to we've got yeah, to keep that, pushing that, the march that, forward. Oh, quick, oh, since you know you have explained the, your concept, but I don't think I've captured the whole thing. So you just go through the whole thing and then the, the, you know your um, concept of traveling across country. The march across America. The march across America is an uh, <laughs> it's an attempt at so many things. For me, it's kind of a a, a moving meditation. Um, but what we're doing is we're carrying a flag of peace uh, across the United States to a gentleman named Scott Camille. It's a, it's a direct action and it's heavily symbolic. Its main focus is to bring awareness in the communities to problems that are faced by veterans uh, in their post-deployment life. Homelessness, PTSD, alienation from our families and friends. And these are... Uh, symptoms of the militarized individual can happen weeks after deployment or in many cases decades later there's a sort of blowback when one is is comes out of the service and attempts to fit into mainstream society without the normal tools that we learn uh, by normal uninterrupted teen development and um, I just had such a, a heavy day today explaining it to Venice and talking to families about it that uh, far from being able to hone my, my concept right now, I just feel a little uh, worked out, a little exhausted. Uh, it is heavy work. It is the holidays. I don't want to add to the depression of the world, but this mission that we've undertaken comes from a very depressing uh, motivational seed that we hope to compost into uh, a beautiful symbolic act of solidarity with the homeless people in America and the oppressed people around the world. And my name is Michael Clift. Uh, my name is James Cartnell and I'm uh, providing the onboard media and technical uh, assistance to Mike. We're both veterans. Uh, like in the army, I was in the navy, and I lo I loved his idea. I thought it was great, and that we should, um, you know, try to work together to to accomplish uh, what he wants to do with adding my skills to it, uh, so that it'd be easier to get the message out. And uh, I fully support the idea, and I'm I'm here for the adventure. We've had some uh, ups and downs, and even some slight disagreements, but you know, we're we're still here, and um, you know, there's there's times when you you're out there and you just want to give up because it's it is rough. I challenge anybody to do what we're doing on a 
mm, I'd say a limited amount of funding, which is none. We do what we do every day to bring in what we need for the day. And um, we've had some online donations here and there, which we can't access right now. We have no way to get uh, to a bank. And, uh, you know, we, we have a, a $20 here and there that come in. And uh, we're going to put that towards bikes so we can move along a lot faster. Um, I want to thank my mom for donating $60 so that we can get the bikes done. She wanted to make a contribution to... Uh, to help me out and she's struggling as well uh my most of my family is struggling which is one of the reasons why we're doing this is you know because it's not just the homeless it's you know they say the middle class but it's all the way up through all the classes you know i mean we're all mm -hmm. family and you know it's the veterans as you say is are a firewall between yeah that's you know this the the citizens the protesters you know, people that um, are trying to voice their opinion, you know, we have, you know, I, I swore to protect and defend this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and we have a domestic problem. So, you know, that's that's kind of my little spiel on just part of the reason, one of the reasons why I'm here helping, working with Mike to get this done. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I've a couple different tacks to the, the problem one is you know go we, we ha absolutely have to create friction against the, the establishment and a lot of the work that, that James and I do is, is focused on the problems and solutions of the establishment the background the, the, the social critique all of it's wrapped up in a sort of and countercultural peace trip but today it being Christmas Eve, it was really the vibe I was getting today was more of like a family thing, and that's really what I've been reflecting on lately is just what constitutes a family, and why is it that families do some of the most horrible things to one another or ignore one another, um, and other families in in third, you know, I was talking about first world problems, you know, rock star first world problems, and how people have to struggle to find happiness and struggle 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 as revolutionaries we we're constantly involved in struggle but it doesn't have to be painted that way it's it's more or less painted as i i look at it as spiritual exercise you know swimming a long distance is a struggle you know making it yeah. through the first couple weeks of basic training is a struggle making it through the first 25 years after my service is a struggle and I just don't I'm just not into like the struggle and talking about it right now I more or less want to like focus on the the feelings of fellowship and unity that we're feeling when we contact the veterans when we contact the occupiers how we feel that sense of family you know when we're out here just like our brothers and sisters in the armed services right now and uh, in no way to diminish their service, but there's so many people who've been militarized that are alone right now because their families weren't, and their families can't understand that, even though they are subject to a very subtle form of, of militarization by living in gated communities, by being very restrictive with their children, or not restrictive enough. Um, the whole authoritarian trip is, is heavy because we want to guide the world without ruling it we want to experience power without having it destroy us we want to love without losing things and uh, it's important to me to be able to travel in a pretty uh, primitive fashion to, to reach out with people within arm's reach like talking to people person to person and, um, I have to do it because there's nothing left for me to do, really. You know. You see what 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 did you think about what James and I were were kind of presenting today? You know, we had our stuff set up and we got some great footage of that, some crowd reaction. And I was I'm just curious as, as to if you think that what I'm trying to do is gonna be. Uh, 
you know, helping a movement in, in, a, in a realistic way. I mean, you so, I mean, you know that better than me being a veteran. And like you said, that, you know, like that other guy sitting right next to you, you know, uh, he didn't, you know, he just, just listening to what you guys are saying, he kind of piped up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a matter of everybody having a, a voice, you know, that will resonate with the, within their own, uh, I guess, uh, frequency, mm -hmm. you know, like yours will definitely resonate with with veterans. It does, but we saw the, we saw uh, an older gentleman today who, who thought I was a complete joke, who looked at me with scorn and shook his head, and when, and when he said, what a joke, I, I said, why would you say that? What, why, why is it so hard for people to understand veterans for peace? It is what it describes, it is self-contained that veterans you know who've, who've actually been open to themselves and their inner voice will find that you know they, they say nobody you know the last person who wants to go to war is a soldier and that's a problem for the establishment they need to create a mindset that's as blank as possible but when they grab creative bright young kids and and fuck them all up in the first three or four years of their young adulthood, then they wonder why we're having a hard time adjusting in our middle age after spending the past decades trying to fit in and be mainstream. I mean, it, it boils down to, I want to feel successful. And I do that every day by knowing that I've reached someone and tried to reach a part of myself that I'm trying to reclaim because I don't think that success is you reached a point and now you're successful and then the rest of your time is spent maintaining that it's an ongoing process where we're attempting to find joy in our lives as opposed to pleasure because pleasure lasts as long as the beer high pleasure lasts as long as the weed lasts you know well, as long as you know you're getting laid every now and then but true joy is something that I think a lot of veterans find elusive because we got snatched up at such an early age and it doesn't take a heavy horrible firefight to to traumatize a person a woman can be traumatized simply filling out the order forms to have people killed uh, you can be traumatized by seeing your <clears throat> friends harmed you know? and speaking of women in the military we met our first female uh, homeless veteran. They tonight. copped to it, and, and on this trip. And well, she seemed to know what she was talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. And um, you know, she didn't produce any ID or anything that, that she was a veteran like we do. But um, her story rang true. It sounded like she knew what she was talking about. Yep. Um, and most people that are veterans, I find, have a real hard time or don't want to use and I myself uh, was guilty of it not wanting to use the veteran as an excuse for please help me yeah you, you know don't wanna... um, but the thing is is we are in a state of affairs in this country where I think the more that sign is seen the more the people that are supporting the troops will support the veterans and our idea that there's a problem with this country that needs to be fixed and you know when you see the president and a uh, significant amount of people below him receiving a uh, salary when they've been discharged from office equal to what they were making when they were in office those are where the cuts need to be made. not Absolutely. on my food stamps not on your food stamps you know I mean we've got a lot of problems and like I said earlier that was just one of them there's another one right there we've tons of things to talk about poisoned food Monsanto it's, it's very you know complex. Um, it's it's, in, it's intense I got uh, 14 minutes 30 seconds I'm gonna start this over with a quick archive don't forget to check hey, out the viewers, website thanks for joining independent citizen media dot weebly dot com and occupy veterans san francisco dot weebly dot com we'll be right back yeah.